Okay, good morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning. <clears throat> Bear with me. I got kind of a head cold this morning, so help me out here this morning singing, so, which you always do a great job. If you would, let's, uh, let's all stand, turn to page uh, 77, please. <clears throat> page 77, we'll sing the first and the last verse. Oh, that will be glory. Glory for me. Page 77. <clears throat> my labors and trials are o'er, I might am safe from that beautiful shore. Just to be near the dear Lord I adore, will through the ages be glory for me. Oh, that will be Good morning, everyone. We are glad that you are here with us. Ones that are home, we're glad you tuned in as well. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to bless the day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day that you have given to us to come and to worship you and, and sing praises unto your precious name. And Lord, I just pray that you would have your will and way all day long in everything that we say and do in the Sunday school hour, preaching the morning service, evening service. We just pray that your will will be done. You would bring the people into the house of God today uh, to worship you. And Father, we're so grateful and thankful for the ones that have come. We ask you would bless them and watch over them. Keep them safe now. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. We'll take our offering at this time, so if you uh, trust that you will pray for the offering and you will give liberally unto the offering. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you once again that we're able to give to you. And Lord, we know that you give back more than we give to you, and we thank you for that. Ask you to just bless uh, the offering this morning. In, that, in Jesus' name, amen.
Okay, again, if you would, take your hand and let's turn to page 228, please. Page 228, he hideth my soul. We'll sing again the first and last verse. <coughs> Page 228. <clears throat> A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the Appreciate that very much. Well, um, we're glad that you're here this morning, and we've got a lot to pray for, and a lot of people that we have to pray for and need to pray for, and so keep them on your mind. Uh, also, I forgot to mention this last week, uh, but uh, once a month, uh, been putting out a prayer request uh, that are complete. I think complete. And so uh, if you uh, would go on uh, the receptions desk, I believe there's a copy there for you. And if you would like to just have a whole, uh, the, all the church members and everything in, uh, that we know of, uh, you could pray for them as well. And the list is quite long. And of course here we're just trying to more or less uh, uh, talk about our class and, and uh, ones that are sick in our class. And, but overall, uh, you can get the list uh, at the receptionist desk uh, even today. I believe they probably have that. So uh, just uh, pray for that, if you will. Uh, pray for B. She's in a lot of pain this morning, and so I asked you to pray for her. Uh, Brother Cross, uh, you know, just uh, I, I tell you, up and down. Uh, with him, and so, uh, you know, uh, need to get stabilized, and maybe we ought to pray that the Lord would just uh, stabilize him, and, and where that he could uh, continue uh, getting well and getting better, but of course, the Lord's in, in charge of that, and, and so we, all we can do is just pray for him, and pray for the others as well, and then Wanda Clark, remember to pray for her, she'd been going through a lot and so just uh, pray for her. And I believe that she's on Facebook, the ones that are on Facebook. 
uh, can get some information there as well. And then Adam Pierce uh, had surgery, and uh, the way I understood it, they took all the uh, hardware out, they call it, uh, that they put in in Indianapolis, and they've expanded it and made it a, a better, I guess. And, and so I uh, pray for him as he uh, starts rehabbing and things of that nature, and, and of course, uh, praying that he would soon be back upon his feet and back in the church where that he uh, pastors. And so, uh, you know, when you're without a pastor for some time, uh, there, it creates uh, problems and things of that nature. And so we need to pray for the church as well uh, during this particular time. And so uh, pray for him and pray for the church, if you will, pray for the family as well. I'm sure they're going through quite a bit as well. Uh, Pearson family, so pray for them. Uh, Mary Doble, continue praying for her. Uh, and then uh, Mike Hopper is still having some pain in the back. And so uh, just pray uh, for his uh, uh, will to be done his life as well. And the Lord would strengthen him. And then also Tim Thomas. Uh, and I, I think uh, that he is going to be calling the doctor tomorrow and uh, wanting to have them to do uh, something about his, about his uh, tickleitis. And so uh, uh, he was telling yesterday uh, that he, he knew enough about his body by playing sports and all things like that, how it feels and things like that. And so he is going to meet, uh, try to get a, a, a surgery uh, to get that completed, if you will. Just pray for him that the Lord's will will be done. Michelle Sims, uh, pray for her. Vicki Thornburg, and then, of course, the Ratliffs have been out quite a while, and so we need to pray for them, if you will. And, and then, of course, the shut-ins, pray that the Lord's will will be done. Uh, concerning that, you have a, a list uh, of names in the bulletin on the back there where you can send cards, call, or whatever it might be. Just pray for them that the Lord's will will be done. I pray for our church, uh, pastor, leadership of our church, that the Lord's will uh, would be done concerning that as well. And then, of course, the state of Indiana. Pray uh, for the state of Indiana that, uh, uh, you know, just pray for the governor. We'll be electing a new, another governor uh, this coming uh, election time, so uh, remember the election, if you will, and and uh, then of course uh, pray uh, for uh, uh, the uh, president, uh, vice president, all the leadership there. Just have you have the Lord's will will be done concerning that, and uh, not only that, but uh, pray for our uh, police and our military and and the ones that are out in the front line uh, doing the work and of course t risking their lives and as well and so uh, just pray for them. You have a letter uh, this morning from the Bandas in Africa and so uh, I'm sure you'll want to read that. Pray for our other uh, missionaries as well. Uh, they're on the uh, back the board there in the front of the auditorium so uh, just pray uh, concerning them the Lord's will will be done. We do have any new prayer requests in this section. Anyone? Yes, Dave. Kim's cousin, pray for her, okay? The Lord's will be done. Anybody else? How about in this section, anyone? Yes. Okay, all right. C-section, huh? Okay, all right. Pray for another granddaughter for the Garretts and Chad and his wife. She had a baby C-section yesterday, a daughter. And so pray for them, if you will. Uh, not Anyone else in this section? How about in the far section? Yes, Alma. Who? 
Who's having surgery? Your friend of yours. All right. Pray that the Lord's will will be done there. Anybody else? Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you uh, for being able to approach your throne and asking you to do that which we cannot do. And Lord, uh, we just lift our names up to you. And uh, Lord, that you have to do the work in the hearts and lives of people. You have to heal the body and touch them. And Lord, we just pray uh, that your, your will will be done. And Lord, I, I just pray that you might help them to grow in the Lord and, and depend upon you and look to you for guidance in their life during this time of setbacks in their life and uh, health issues. And, and Lord, we just pray that your will will be done. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, turn in your Bible to the book of John. John chapter 12. Uh, we're still in the book of John in chapter 12. Uh, we're going to be starting with verse 36 this morning. And of course, uh, we see that the Bible says here in verse 36, while, while you have light, while you have light, believe in the light that you may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. And so here we find the Bible telling us very clearly that this is coming to the end of the, of the Lord's public ministry. Uh, from uh, uh, from this, chapter, uh, this chapter on, uh, we're going to see a different uh, ministry altogether. And some say that during this time, he is going to be teaching the 12 and, and instructing them. Of course, we know of when the Lord Jesus Christ dies uh, on the cross of Calvary and all like that takes place, and he goes back to heaven, and then the, the, then the 12 is going to be in in charge of all the things that the Lord was doing, and they will continue his ministry uh, through, through the word of God and, and of course, by uh, telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the public ministry of Christ is coming to a close in the book of John. Now, that does not mean uh, that you are going to look in other gospels and see that, uh, that it takes place. Uh, you know every gospel is an individual by itself. And of course you know King uh, Matthew is the king and uh, John is, the, is God and all like that. So uh, we see that there's different avenues and different ways uh, that uh, the gospel writers uh, did a certain uh, phase of the Lord's life like the king it's all about him the, uh, uh, John uh, pre, uh, teaches on the on the uh, uh, glory of God and things like that and so we see that it's coming uh, to an end in verse 36 and uh, you know this is a uh, saying uh, said while you have light while you got the light and, of course, Jesus is talking to the Jewish people at this time. While you have the light, why don't you believe in the light? And then it says, if you believe in the light, uh, then you may be the children of light. And so he lays it out very simply and tells them what they need to do. And, and uh, while you have the light, they have the light because it won't be long until he will hide himself. Uh, but it says uh, the, uh, you'll be the children of light. And then, of course, the Bible says, These things spake Jesus and departed, departed from him, from them, and then did hide himself uh, from them. Uh, he is no longer going to be dealing with the Jewish people as such. Uh, not as a nation, maybe as individuals, but not as a nation uh, during his time. Uh, they have uh, rejected him. 
uh, completely. Uh, they have uh, uh, rejected the Messiah. They have rejected the kingdom. And so we see that it's left up uh, to, for them. And then it says he hid himself. And, of course, uh, knowing uh, that takes place, it, go, it says in verse 37, but though he had done so, so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. Uh, and, of course, uh, you begin to see this. The nations respond uh, to the uh, ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he had... He had uh, performed uh, many miracles, many miracles, you know, just uh, like uh, uh, healing the sick, uh, like uh, turning water into wine, uh, uh, like uh, raising the dead, uh, but simply they just, uh, uh, and of course the other miracles that he did, uh, had uh, done in their presence, and of course all of them, every uh, every uh, uh, miracle that Jesus did, I hope that you recognized it in the book of John, especially, where it was all out in the open. It was all where people could see. The ones that needed to see at that particular time, uh, they saw uh, what the Lord was doing. He never did do anything uh, that, uh, that did not have some type of a witness uh, before him when he did that. Uh, yet, and of course they had experienced all the miracles themselves, but the Bible says, uh, yet they, they just would not, they would not believe. Yet they believed not on him. They just simply would not believe on him. And of course uh, we find that in the, the word of God telling us uh, that he is, is with all the mighty works that he did and and things like that. Of course, they remained in unbelief. Uh, and of course, we see that uh, in verse uh, 38, it says uh, that, that the saying of the prophet uh, of the Isaiah, the, the uh, Isaiah the prophet, might be fulfilled, which he spake, "Lord, who has believed our report, and to whom had the Lord arm of the Lord revealed?" And so here we find the Bible telling us uh, that the Jewish people uh, just simply would not believe on him. Uh, and, of course, uh, it is fulfilling a prophecy. Here, it, you know, uh, it says here the, that it might be fulfilled. You might get the idea uh, that the Lord, G, uh, that the Lord uh, kept these Jewish people in unbelief uh, just to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. But that's not so. Uh, and, of course, a lot of people uh, think that very thing. Uh, the ones that would try to discredit uh, the Word of God, they might mention this th very thing here. Said, well, the reason why the Jews couldn't, could not believe is because a prophecy had to be fulfilled. No, the prophecy of Isaiah was given years ago. Uh, even before the Lord was born, uh, this earth. And so it's just, and of course you know and realize in the book of John uh, that uh, Jesus is, uh, is God. Uh, he is God. And so therefore he knows all things. And so he knew uh, what the people would do, uh, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who has believed our report, now, who is the ones that have believed our report? Uh, who is it that uh, did not uh, not believe their report? And, of course, it was, it was the Jewish people uh, during that time and to whom the arm of the Lord is revealed. Uh, the Jewish people were, uh, had, uh, had the uh, uh, word of God given to them by the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the, my, uh, the arm of the Lord revealed was about his miracles and different things like that. But as you uh, go into Isaiah 53, uh, you see that, where that Isaiah sent, uh, said the very thing uh, that uh, John is uh, repeating here. Uh, and, of course, uh, I believed our report, meaning the teaching of the Lord, uh, the Lord's teaching, 
Uh, they did not believe that. The arm of the Lord means his miracles that he performed. And so there's many things here uh, that the Bible telling us uh, from the word of God that, uh, that the, uh, the prophecy of Isaiah was being fulfilled down to the very letter of, 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 uh, of the scriptures here in the word of God. And then going on to verse 36, uh, 39, where it says uh, there, uh, therefore, uh, therefore they could not believe because that Isaiah had said. And, and if you would go back into the Old Testament in the Isaiah chapter 6, and verse uh, 10, I think it is, uh, where that it says uh, there in the scriptures, it says, making the heart of this people fat, making their ear heavy and shutting their eyes, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their, heart, with their ears uh, and understand with their hearts and convert and be healed. And so that's what Isaiah was talking, or John was talking about here, uh, in, in the, the book of John concerning Isaiah uh, chapter 6 and verse 10 in the word of God. And, uh, I'll get back to John chapter 12 just a moment, but I wanted you to see verse 39 once again uh, where that it is telling us uh, from, from the word of God here. It says, uh, therefore they could not believe because that the saying of Isaiah, and of course, uh, we have just read in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 10, why they could not believe. And then, of course, if you would look uh, back in verse 37, uh, we, you would see they uh, would not believe. They would not believe. Uh, but then here in verse 39, it says, they, therefore, they could not believe. They could not believe. Now, why? Because the Lord had hid himself. And you know as well as I do, anyone left by themselves is not going to be seeking the Lord, is not going to be saved. Uh, the presence of the Lord has to be there. But he has already hid himself from the Jewish people and so uh, during the opportunity they had, they would not believe it. But now they could not believe it because he had hid himself. And, and of course, uh, we, we see that very clearly from the word of God. They just simply could not believe. So God, what did he do? He give them up. And of course, the Bible tells us uh, throughout the scriptures, the Lord will not always strive with man. There's a time coming when the Lord is just going to completely leave a person alone, uh, no longer deal with them, no longer speak to them about, about the Lord. I remember years ago I was in college and I, I was working at a hospital and, and uh, in the emergency room and, and things like that. And, and uh, I, I was working with an individual uh, and he was older than I. Uh, but, uh, you know, I tried to witness to him, and, of course, he would, he would say this. He says, there's no use speaking to me. God is not dealing with me about anything about, about salvation at all. And, of course, I, I assume uh, that other students during that time had witnessed to him and told him uh, about the Lord, but he was simply not interested in it at all. And he just said, you just might as well uh, save, your, uh, save your strength. Uh, I, I'm not interested in that at all. And so uh, we see here, uh, they just simply, they could not believe. And so God gave them up. And then it says in verse uh, 40, uh, the Bible telling us clearly, once again, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. And so here we see the explanation and of course it goes all the way back into 
uh, the book of Isaiah. Well, in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 10, where it says that, and of course, uh, we find here that John is just telling, the, uh, the, the, uh, telling us and telling uh, whoever would listen to what he says and reads what he says, he has believe, uh, blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, blinded their eyes to the truth, and they just simply could not see anymore. Uh, in other words, they were in darkness. What the Lord had told them, uh, uh, told them, said, if you, uh, you need the light while well, you have the light, if you don't have the light, uh, then you'll be in darkness. And so here we see that they, they uh, understood that very plainly and very clearly uh, from the Word of God. And this is God's response to the ungodly way that the Son of God was treated uh, by the Jewish people. They, and, of course, we went in, and you'll, you'll remember, we took the time to look in uh, to the, about the Pharisees, and we found out in detail uh, all the things that they were doing to the Lord and, and things of that nature. And so we see that they, they treated the Lord in an ungodly way. Uh, they treated him in a way that, uh, that no one else uh, has ever, uh, ever treated anyone, anyone before uh, these Jewish people did. And, of course, they refused the light. They have rejected the truth. And so, therefore, their eyes were blinded. Their heart was uh, hard. And then, of course, uh, and by the way, to this very day, to this very day, uh, Israel uh, is still blinded to the truth, and they still have a hard heart uh, against uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you might say, well, why in the world uh, does uh, Israel have the uh, Christian people to come over and to look into the tomb and, and different things uh, about the Lord? They are making money. Uh, they... Uh, you know, a, a Jew, and of course I dealt with the Jews. I lived next to Amberley Village, which was a Jewish uh, village, and, and I often went, it, went there and to the businesses and things like that to see, and I would always go with the idea that I would uh, show them Isaiah 53. And Isaiah 53. And I'd read to them, and they simply could not see that. I, and I, I'd ask him afterward, I said, who do you think that, uh, that means? Who is it that, that God is speaking uh, to in the Old Testament? And they'd say, Jeremiah. Uh, you know, it was similar. Uh, Jeremiah had a similar experience. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but they would not see the Lord Jesus Christ even to this day, their hearts are blinded, eyes are blinded, and hearts are heavy, and the truth, uh, they just will not believe uh, that at all. And so here is a truth we should remember. We ought to remember this truth uh, that we are covering now because for the simple reason uh, that one day uh, the Gentiles... Uh, 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 this will repeat, be repeated to the Gentile nations one day uh, because of their unbelief, uh, because of their, they just simply do not believe. Uh, and, of course, it could happen at any time, at any moment. Uh, this simply could happen to uh, individuals. Look, if you will, if, uh, into uh, Second Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and, and notice, if you will, in verse 12, where it says that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and ye in him according to the grace of the Lord Jesus, uh, uh, the Lord, the, the grace of our Lord, uh, of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, we see here, uh, the Bible telling us, I'm in chapter 1, I'm sorry. I need to get in chapter 2 and uh, verse, uh, I didn't think it sounded quite right. It says, they might all be damned 
who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And so we see one day, it is going, and by the way, uh, it, it look in verse 10 where it says, with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And of course, he's talking about the Gentile nations as well. And you know, it would be good if we would tell unsaved friends and acquaintance and maybe a relation about what is going to be taking place in the last days. And of course, that's all you can do. Uh, you, don't, you know, they might believe it, they might not believe it, but still, simply, you need to tell them the truth that's what's going to be taking place in the last days. Well, go back to the book of John, if you will, in chapter 12, and notice, if you will, uh, where that it, uh, we see that uh, still dealing with uh, chapter uh, verse 40 uh, in chapter 12, verse 40, and once again, I'll get there eventually. He, he had blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should uh, not see with their eyes and understand with their hearts and be converted and should heal, should heal them. And so the Gentiles, one day, is going to be the very thing. And so we find that the, the Lord telling us very clearly. And by the way, we'll not go into it, but you need to read chapter one of the book of Romans. You, you need to look at that and, and where that uh, the Bible tells us once again uh, that uh, Gentile nations one day, because of their unbelief, because of their unbelief, uh, is going to uh, face something that they have not faced. Uh, they'll be blinded to the truth. They'll believe a lie and different things like that as the book of Romans tells us. And then, of course, in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 2, where it says, uh, you know, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a truth or salvation? How is it that an individual is going to be saved when they try to escape salvation? They're not going to be saved. Uh, there's no way in the world that they're going to be saved. And so here we find the Bible telling us the truth of the Word of God. You'll not escape uh, in, 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 in neglecting the salvation that God has provided for the individual. And then look at verse uh, uh, 41, if you will. These things said Isaiah, uh, when he saw his glory and spake of him. Now, when did this take place? I don't know whether you know uh, uh, about the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah or not, but notice, if you will, going back to chapter 6, and then we'll read uh, verses 1 through 5, uh, where that you will get the gist of what he is saying here uh, in verse uh, uh, 41. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. Now we see that the Lord is capitalized, uh, all of it, capital. And of course that means Jehovah. Jehovah, and that means God. And who is Jesus? He is God. And so we see that it's all connected here. Sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple, and above it stood the seraphims, and each one had six wings. With twain he did cover his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Now, of course, we know who the Lord of hosts is. Uh, it is the Lord Jesus Christ. When he will come back in battle, he will become the Lord of hosts when he comes back to this earth one day. He will be the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. 
that time when he comes back uh, with all the saints of God coming back to this earth, it's going to be filled with glory. And then it goes on to say in verse 4, And the post of the door, a door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said, I woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts. He's coming back one of these days. And, of course, we see. And, by the way, this is one of the greatest testimonies that you will ever see on the deity of Christ in the Old Testament. There is nothing more glorious than this here in the Word of God as you look in Isaiah chapter 6 and these first uh, few verses of Scripture. You see the context, and of course the context proves, uh, makes it very plain and proves uh, that uh, the reference is to none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all you can say about it. And one day uh, we see that it will take place. And, of course, that is going to be a a glorious time uh, when he comes back with all the saints of God. And look, if you will, uh, where the Bible telling us, uh, once again, going back into our verse 41, I wish I could just instantly, but I, I can't do it. Have to go through the scripture. And have you noticed most of our scriptures have gone to the latter part of the chapter? They couldn't be up the first part of it. Uh, but it says, These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and uh, spake of him. And of course, that's speaking about Isaiah 6. And verse 1 through 3 especially, this is one of the most outstanding descriptions that you'll find about the Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament or in the New, as far as that concerned. Uh, and then notice, if you will, in verse uh, uh, 40, uh, 42, this will probably be our last uh, scripture that we'll look at this morning. It said, nevertheless... Among chief, the chief rulers, also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Now here we see uh, the question is asked, and I, 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 and I know I've asked this question before. Uh, do you believe... Uh, The chief rulers here, uh, do you mean to think that these people were saved? Do you believe that they were saved, the chief rulers? We have seen in in the book of John, in in chapter 2, where uh, others have believed on him, and and different ones have believed on him in John chapter 2. John chapter 7, uh, where we see that again, in verse 31, where you'll see that many believed on him. Uh, And then in chapter 8, you see it again, and we've repeated that in verse 30, where you see that. John chapter 10 uh, 10, and verse 42, we see that once again. Uh, uh, Chapter 11 and verse 45, We have looked at that again over and over. But, you know, in each one of these, and I I revisited these verses of Scripture and looked at them uh, again, as well as the one that we're dealing with this morning. But we see that each verse here uh, has nothing to show uh, that these uh, individuals the chief ruler or whoever it might be, had received the Lord by saving faith. There was always something that come up, like here. It says, uh, the, nevertheless, among the chief rulers, 
Also, many believed on him. But that's all they did. They believed him. And you know, there's a lot of people today that believe in Jesus. They'll believe, but not to the saving of their soul. And we see here that they believe that, but then you see the, uh, they did not fulfill what they needed to do. It says, but because of the Pharisees, they did not, what? Confess him. Over and over in the book of John, you see the same thing. There is nothing to show that these people had a salvation. Uh, they simply did not do that. And, of course, uh, you know, uh, that's one of the major things in, in the Word of God that tells us uh, that we, we see that, that we need to confess. Uh, in fact, the Lord Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, uh, look, if you will, in chapter 12, uh, write it down or something. But then uh, notice in verse 8 where it says, Also I say unto you that whosoever, whosoever shall what confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. Verse 9, But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. Now that's only one uh, scripture that we can turn to and show you that these people did not have uh, a saving faith. That they, they turned away. They would not confess him. Uh, you, you'll remember the, uh, the man that was born, uh, born blind. Uh, Jesus healed him. But he confessed him. He went to the temple, and he, uh, eventually he confessed uh, that he was uh, who he claimed to be. Uh, and, and, of course, you see that. And, and you might say, uh, well, I don't know if I've ever confessed him. Well, if you're a member of this church and you've been baptized, you confessed him. Because that's one of the things that they do before they bi bi baptize you is that they, you have to confess him as your Lord and Savior before you are baptized. And so, and many other, uh, uh, many other uh, instances that you might find, people confess the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior it's just by simply. I remember being in a, in a, uh, a barbershop one time, and I was sitting there waiting for me to get my hair cut, and there was people... Uh, men in there, and uh, uh, they were blaspheming the Lord. And I just simply said to them, do you know the one that you are uh, uh, cursing? Do you know him as your personal Savior? And, of course, uh, uh, at that time there was silence, and uh, nothing was said, and... Uh, and I just walked out. I got up and walked out. Uh, I did not stay in that, and I haven't been back to that barbershop since. Haven't been back there. All, all these years, I haven't been back. And I had the opportunity for one thing, but we see that the Bible's telling us here in the verses uh, 8 and 9 where the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you know, tells us to confess him. And, of course, you know Romans chapter 10. I no doubt about that, where that you'll find uh, verses uh, 9 through 11. Uh, you want, might want to write that down and read it when you get home. Uh, but we see that, uh, that what the Bible says there about, about the Lord uh, Jesus Christ, confessing him uh, before men. And, of course, none of these outside of the blind man confess the Lord as their personal Savior. And so we see here from the Word of God, uh, they just, uh, they, wanted, they, they wanted to have Judaism, their religion, more than they wanted God. They wanted that religion more than they wanted God. But look, if you will, where it says there, uh, in, uh, let's look at verse uh, 
think we were finished with verse 42. Verse 40, nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of, of the temple. And then this is, a, a, well, uh, our time is gone. They're waiting to get in. So we'll finish this up uh, next week, okay? Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the, the word of God and Lord for what has been said today, I pray that we might look into it in our own way, and, and Lord, that your will will be done in every heart and every life this morning. Give us understanding the scriptures, and be with us, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you're dismissed. I'm sorry I kept you late.